and put up Christmas lights yesterday. Fuller has Christmas lights too. We're all ready for Christmas here. Hello, Mike Winders. Hello. It's just Mike and myself. It's a quiet morning. No chairs in the room. <laughs> but that I'm sure will change. It will. So here we go. Here are the click tracks. First song is Lion in the Lamb. Next song, No Longer Slaves. Here's what I think about this song. Love this song, No Longer Slaves, awesome song. One, it seems like it sounds like it's uh, a meatloaf song. Use me, unravel me. So it could be a meatloaf song. Two, could be Running Against the Wind by Bob Seger. Which one of these describes you at the moment? Right now, I think this one. If this, this is my cool. If this was cool. a not a laughing face, <laughs> just crying, just a Tear straight tears. mouth, maybe no tears, but <clears throat> eyes closed and yeah. asleep. Yeah. That describes me. Have you ever had a night where mm. you can't sleep, you're in bed, tossing and turning, you look at the clock every oh. 10, 15, 30 minutes, and you just do the math. You're like, okay, if I fall asleep now, I get four hours. Mm -hmm. If I fall asleep now, I get three hours and 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, you start counting the minutes. And rather than, than like go to sleep, you just get angrier and angrier. That's what, if that I was, fall asleep now, I'll be late for church. That was my night <laughs> last night. <laughs> That's right. I got two hours of sleep, so. Well, I, I got more than that, but I feel terrible. My whole family's sick. That's you ever feel good. like you wake up on Sunday Let's and stay. everybody's Let's sick? Sit over here. You gotta play it cool, man. So hey, a lot of you guys commented and interacted in our last uh, vlog about in-ear monitoring. Uh, and we hear you, and we heard all of your questions. <laughs> How ironic. We hear you. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. We are definitely going to address a lot of the questions you guys have. One of the most interesting ones uh, to me was, and I think that is experienced by a lot of people, is uh, I think a lot of you as worship leaders or worship team members say, I want to do in your monitoring, but either my church or the rest of my band or team is, is, is uh, I don't like to use the word not on board, but like maybe kind of scared of it. It's Lots a, of obstacles. Yeah, yeah. or or it, it's a barrier. It's like, yeah. how's this going to work? I don't like yeah. this. I don't want to do this. It maybe, yeah. it, it maybe people think it's way too expensive, yeah. which it doesn't have to be. Yeah. So we're going to talk about that in depth in the future. When you said that, I instantly thought of what Bill Hybels talks about with vision. vision um, the fact that you have to paint a picture of what here is like and have to paint yeah. a picture for what there is like. And you have to paint a picture that there is better than here, and yeah, then you gotta figure out how to get people to move from here and to that, there, and that's what we're gonna talk about. That picture is, has to be compelling. We will never, ever, ever, ever stop encouraging you to care for people that you live around and work around and run into at different places in the public square and extend the invitation for them to either receive Christ if you want to lead them to, lead them to Christ on your own or extend the invitation and be a bringer. This is why God changes lives. We're a small church. We are a small church compared to the number of people who are out there facing a Christless eternity. We are a puny, little, pitiful, pathetic, small church.
we survived, almost. Fuller lost his voice. I can barely talk. Um, <laughs> lost my voice right after the third song, during the during movie, the first service? actually. Yeah, I was, um, I realized I could barely sing, so I, uh, it, was, it, was, it was pretty scary, yeah. actually. You hear me now. I obviously can't <laughs> sing anything above, like, an octave below middle C. So you just got other people to lead. That's yep, I took two of our other male vocalists, which fortunately we had them on this week, and I said, hey guys, Doug, you're gonna lead No Longer Slaves. Mike, you're gonna lead Holy Spirit. You yeah. guys comfortable with that? And they were like, yeah. Always be prepared, which we talked about when opportunity and preparation meet. Yeah, we talked about that a couple weeks ago. Because I bet yeah. if there was a vocalist on your team who was good, but had never led before, um, who you might have been thinking about, maybe this person could lead a song. Yeah, that would have been the, they that would have been the it. Nod. That would have been it. <laughs> you should always be ready, and not just for what you got to do, but be ready to step in and yeah. help whatever whatever the church needs. Right. And that's a great place to be, and you never know what 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 the product of that will yeah. be. So oh, we said we were going to talk about um, if you're in leadership and you want to to implement some some in-ears and click tracks maybe but you know in-ear monitoring versus wedge monitoring uh, and you meet resistance how do you handle that oh resistance and that and from the comments that we've seen on the video um, it sounds like a lot of you have team members who don't want to jump in yeah I mean I think well first of all you got to know your role um, I think if you're the the leader, if you're in charge, yeah. um, and it's your and you have the authority to make that change, then I think you need to lead with authority, get people on board, and come up with a great plan, uh, yeah. and just realize that people fear what they don't understand. People fear what they do not understand, and so people might not want to do it for a various number of reasons most of them are probably driven by fear fear that it's not going to be comfortable it's not going to be sound good it's going to be expensive blah 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 there's all these fears and a lot of the fears aren't justified right some of them are um and so you got to figure out how you're gonna um respond to that and how you're gonna paint a picture that uh, is gonna get people excited i mean the bottom line is you want to move towards making things better and so you got to figure out how you know, implementing in-ears makes things better um, and gives you more ability and more quality. And that, and then you've got to figure out a way to explain that to people with grace, with information to debunk whatever fears they might have. Once you come up with a great plan and a great vision, um, it's pretty easy to get people on board. If it's yeah. exciting, if it's compelling, um, and, and you can do that, I think people will jump on board. If you're not the person that makes the decision or maybe you're not the leader and it's not your decision that's a little bit trickier um because what you've got to do now is you've got to do what john maxwell calls 360 degree leadership you have to lead the people above you but in the same way you've got to find a great solution and you got to cast vision so that the people who do make the decisions uh get on board and want to do it yeah it's not something you can force so a lot of it is just vision. I mean, the bottom line for us, I couldn't imagine doing what we do without in-ears. Right. And it's an easy sell. It's an easy sell. But um, did you use them when you first started? Uh, when I got to New Hope, we had one set of in-ears, one set of wireless in-ears, um, and we used floor monitors, floor wedges. So how did you transition from that to, because you use all in-ears now? Yeah, well, I knew that it was gonna cost money for us because you know, I knew we needed about 10 sets of them to do what I wanted to do. So the first thing I did is I came up with a, a financial plan that allowed us over time. Now, it's not something we did overnight. It's something we did over the course of two years. So these things take time. This was something we did over the course of two years. You know, every couple months we'd buy a new set and we would slowly transition. Um, and, you know, I just casted a lot of vision and we, you know, so everyone else kind of saw the need. Uh, but once we made that transition, you know, everybody was really happy with, uh, you know, what it was uh, gave us the ability to do. But it did take time, and it and it took time for me. You know, I had to be patient because I knew what the future looked like, but I knew that it was going to take a while to get there. But then we got there, and it was great. So did you have people along the way who didn't want to use them? Yeah. Well, you know, I didn't have people that necessarily didn't want to use them. 
but I had people that had lots of questions about them. Okay. And I had people, you know, and the truth is if you've never used in-ears, when you first use them, it's extremely uncomfortable. And a lot of people, if they don't have to use them, they won't. But we made it kind of, we got to the point where if you didn't use them, you were at a disadvantage. Because you couldn't hear the click, you couldn't hear the cues, you couldn't hear yourself. So people started to realize the pros much outweighed the cons. Don't make somebody feel like they're doing something bad yeah. by not wanting to use in-ears. Yeah, that method you're... never works. Yeah, so Fuller mentioned leading with grace and you have to do that. You can't, you can't, um, you can't come through and say, I'm gonna make all these changes and have people who resist those changes and you treat them like you, you make them or else. That's not a good solution. That, that doesn't really gain you anything yeah, except the dictatorship. What you've done is you've elevated whatever you want to do with your worship team over the people themselves. Mm, that's good. And you never want to elevate something over people. Now, you might come, I think that you could probably come to a point where somebody, you've led them with grace along the way, and you've explained to somebody, you've cast vision to them about why you're doing what you're doing, and if they don't want to do it, then, then, then I believe there's there's precedent to have a conversation maybe this maybe you know maybe this isn't for you anymore yeah um, we're moving in this direction and we'd love to have you with us but this would be after a long process where they know that person would hopefully know that you care about them as a person more than you care about them using in-ears versus wedges if you went up to somebody on your worship team and you said what if I told you I could come up with a solution that you could hear yourself better <laughs> That you could hear everyone else better, yeah. that you could not go deaf, you could protect your hearing in the long haul, and you could you could perform better because you'll be able to stay with the band and hear things more clear and more crisp. And on top of that, the sound guy is going to be able to mix it better. If I told you I had a solution for that, you'd be nobody would go no thanks. Right. No thanks. I I I'm, I just want to struggle and I want to not be able to hear myself. So it's really not a question of what the solution is it's a question of painting a picture for the solution yeah. and i think most musicians you, would want to do and that how you lead people to it yeah and leadership then leadership is is hard it's very difficult and the important thing is to lead through it with yeah. grace and vision because the truth is most people want to be a part of something that's moving in the right direction and yeah. constantly getting better and if and as long as you can tie that to why you're doing it um, most people will get on board so thanks for watching hey if you have any comments or questions about anything we've been talking about or something you'd like to see in a future sunday vlog uh leave them below on youtube um say hey we'd love to hear from you tell us where you're from that'd be yeah. good to know be awesome to see where all you guys are from tell us where you're from what church you're uh what church you're in if you're if you're serving in a church um that'd be cool to know it'd be interesting too to hear what your biggest need is yeah it'd be cool to get a thread going what's your biggest need what are what's the biggest need you're facing right now in your ministry just general just anything goes what's yeah just need? anything like what what's the biggest need uh we'd love to talk about that with yeah, you it, yeah yeah like that with if you. we could create resources that would help fulfill that need yeah what, what would you want us to do yeah that'd be it that's a good one all right see you next time peace